do you know what carbon pricing is? Before we tell you, let's just say it consists of a concept born out of the need to take into account the environmental, social and economic damage caused by the emission of polluting gases, what economists call assuming a negative externality. Today, we know two things. The first is that emitting greenhouse gases damages our health, the environment and thus the economy. And the second is that the emission of these gases is continuing, in most countries, without any cost to those responsible. How can we solve this? Assigning a price to greenhouse effect gases will help redirect investment by government and companies toward less polluting production and consumption models. The first attempt to quantify monetarily the cost of emitting polluting gases was made by the creation of emission markets, where a maximum permitted volume of emissions was fixed. The first emissions markets were created in the United States to regulate nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide emissions. On the basis of this experience, it was agreed under the Kyoto Protocol to create a world carbon dioxide emissions market where countries and companies could buy and sell emission allowances based on whether they emitted greenhouse gases or helped reduce emissions through renewable energies. For example, the EU emission trading system is the largest emission trading market in the world, accounting for more than three quarters of international carbon trading. Its activity limits the emissions of 11,000 power plants and large industrial facilities belonging to some 5,000 companies. On the other hand, governments can tax emissions. A tax, unlike the emissions market, fixes a price on the emission. The Canadian province of British Columbia in 2008 set a carbon tax and reduced fuel consumption seven times more than the local government expected. This permitted it to cut other taxes on personal income and companies. Many companies that are not subject to a regulated emissions market also impose a carbon price on themselves voluntarily. How and why do they do this? There are two ways. The first is to evaluate the possible cost that the imposition of a tax on emissions could have so as to redirect future investment, known as a shadow price. And the second defines the price of offsetting, resulting from buying certified emission reductions awarded when they carry out social and environmentally responsible projects in emerging economies. These tools carry an indication of price so that they serve as a motor for implementing measures to improve the efficiency of the company. For example, innovative technologies or the purchase of green energy. As you can see, establishing a carbon price has numerous benefits. It puts a monetary cost on emissions, making polluters responsible. It reveals hidden costs and redirects investments towards social and environmentally responsible projects. It incentivizes energy efficiency measures, promotes innovation in clean technologies and helps polluters to compensate economically, socially and environmentally for the impact of their emissions. To sum up, it reduces polluting emissions and limits global warming. The assignation of a carbon price makes polluters responsible and helps reduce emissions. We should not forget, however, that it is an effective tool only if the price assigned to the emission is high enough to mobilize investments toward non-polluting businesses.